I'm laughing because I'm thinking about, boy, this series, Religiosity, has become kind of a bubble burster for some people. It's like there's all these really wild ideas and outrageous statements that people make that they go, ooh, ah, hmm, hmm. You know, and they get a blog site together and they call it something, you know, special. They get some really cool graphics, you know, and if it's the latest, greatest scapegoat, they put that on there and try to make him out to be the bad guy. And then they add one of these, you know, love Israel flags, you know, so they automatically add that. And then they put in, you know, some kind of, you know, symbolism, you know, to get into that. And then they also get into, you know, something prophetic, so they've got to get that buzz too. So they combine it all, you know, so that way it's assaulting your eyes, you know, and you look at it and you go, ooh, they must be cool. It's kind of boring, isn't it? Imagine a website like that. Pretty boring. Imagine a website with just the Bible to look at. Hmm. Boring? I don't think so. Now, I appreciate the web, don't get me bad, wrong. I appreciate graphics and I use them and I pass them out that are accurate, but in religiosity we've discovered that there's a lot of bad theology being thrown at you from graphics to websites to now prophecy too. And so we wanted to address this big subject so that every time it's mentioned you can go, not. <laughs> and it's America's in prophecy. Right? Wrong. No, it's not. First of all, let's get something clear here. America is roughly 200 years old. Okay, maybe a little older. That's really old for somebody that lives, oh, I don't know, 40, 50 years, or maybe somebody that lives 80 years, or maybe if you're lucky enough to live 100 years, you know, and wow. Wait a minute, if you were lucky enough to live a hundred years, then America's only been around for two of you. Wait a minute, two people? You mean like it could have been my grandchildren? That, you know, if they were a hundred years old and I had them when they were old, then it would be like only a few generations. Are you kind of getting the picture here? Like, you know, it could be like three or four generations. Like, how many generations were there for the pilgrims onward? You know, we go like, okay, the Declaration of Independence was 1776. And let's just say that, you know, it's 1976 would be 200 years. So 220, you know, would be 2024, you know, 200. So really, you know, it hasn't been that long, has it? You know, let me explain something to you about God. God has dealt with quite a few nations in here. I really don't know which one of these nations that's listed in here was only around for 200 years. Um, can I Google that first to find out? Oh, where's my Google sign? Oh, I'm missing the Google sign. That's because we're doing religiosity. Religiosity. You see, People are trying to make you believe something that's utterly stupid to the rest of us. I mean, okay, it's not stupid. It's dumb. First of all, America isn't that big a deal. We're like a pipsqueak. We haven't even had a chance to screw up the next generation. Because, you see, according to Deuteronomy, you know, when you get to the Ten Commandments, you know, the sins of the Father are visited under the generations to the third and fourth generation. How long's a generation? Well, we could say 120 years because that's how many the days of a man is, but you know that's kind of not really where it goes, is it? So let's just say 40 was the number of judgments. So we could say that because God judged the children of Israel and put them into Egypt for 400 years. Wait a minute, God put them into where for 400 years? Were they in Babylon or Egypt? 
wait a minute, when God was dealing with the children of Israel 400 years, America hasn't even been around half that. Well, barely over half. Wow. And God wasn't listening all the time? Or he was listening, but he waited that long? We haven't even been around that long. I wonder if we're that important after all. How long's Egypt been around? <laughs> a long time. Such a deal. So long. Oy. How long were the other civilizations around? You see, God dealt with countries like they were civilizations because they were people groups. America isn't really kind of like a people group. It's kind of like a bastardization because it's really not indigenous people. It's more of potpourri people. You know, kind of like people from here and people from there and people from everywhere. So, when God looks at us, no offense, in the prophetic picture, it's kind of like a mishmash, a micmash, and we would probably be a part of something else, but we're not indigenous to ourselves because we're not that old. We don't establish ourselves as Abraham established the Jewish people, you know, and from then on, they were all Jewish. Well, except for the other ones who were, what, Arabs? <laughs> Well, not exactly, but sort of, you know, so you work that out. Children of Ishmael, the children of Israel, children of Jacob. So, how long have they been around? A long time. So you see, time has a lot to do with how important you are if God's treating you with kind of like interest in prophecy. Now, besides that, first of all, there is no place in here to find... America. Everyone knew that. Everyone proved that. Everyone was done with this. Then they tried to invent it and made Anglo-Israelism and they tried to, even Mormons tried to make up a new Bible so that they could fit in this whole idea that well, we're the 13th tribe. You know, we, we, we ran off you know, from Egypt. We kind of, you know, like took a boat. You know, we headed down to Sudamerica, South America. You know, we kind of like built the temples down there and then we kind of worked our way north. You know, we kind of upscaled, you know, everything when we got to America and we were like the tribes. We're the Mayans. We're Kohotek. Kohotek was the one who came over, you know. Ah, Quetzalcoatl. No. The Mormons were, like, not going to fake anyone out. And to this day, they're not really fooling anyone. Everyone's looking around going, it's a nice idea, but it kind of reminds me of, like, you know, the alien spaceship that came down, you know, and, and populated the Earth, you know, God drives a UFO. You know, remember those? It, you can't find those in print anymore. They're kind of, like, gone. So the Mormons are kind of like getting away from the Book of Mormon because they know that that's kind of dumb. <laughs> don't work. But one thing fundamentalist Christians don't seem to be getting away from now is America's in prophecy. We're the chosen generation. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait a minute. Can you show me in Scripture anything for that? No? Oh. You mean you want to make it fit in there? You want to tendentialize. You want to insert America in prophecy. So, when you read all these, you know, like little cutesy little headlines, America in prophecy, immediately you can say, no, it's not. Because there is no scripture basis for it. None whatsoever. Absolutely none. Ninguno. Not zero. And when you get into it, wasting your time, you're not going to find anything profitable for it because they have to really kind of like, you know, tear out a page here and tear out a page there and make America older than it is or younger than it is, God forbid, but you know, they make it older than it is and try to make it fit into something that it's not. You see, when God was dealing with the nations, he kind of like called them by name. You know, you know, like Gog and Magog, you know, and we kind of know where they are. Israel, so we had a frame of reference, you know, kind of like Cush, you know, and all that. You know, kind of like, you know, we still have those names around so we can compare them. Now, I don't think there's an ancient name for America. Why? Because America wasn't around that long. 200 years, you know, hey, we were like, uh, just like part of something else. So, if we were going to even try, and we can't, to make ourselves fit, and we don't, into prophecy, uh... I think we would look like uh, the Ten Nation Confederacy. <laughs> Probably one of those European nations, you know, and that's kind of like over the water and over the seas, and guess what? There's where we bees. 
Because God isn't going to deal with us like you're thinking or I'm thinking because we think we're important. He's going to deal with it according to His Word. And America isn't that important. Sorry. Now, we think we are because we go, oh, but look what we've done. Well, yeah. How long has it lasted? Uh, let's see. We've been around for 200 years and we had the Satan witch trials. Oh, well, never mind about that. And we colonized Hawaii, but we kind of like, you know, wiped out the people there. Oh, well, never mind about that. You know, we made them into Catholics. I mean, we made them into, you know, Methodists. Oh, well, you know, we've been doing a lot of good work. Yeah, we have. You know, there's missionaries all over the place. We send people out and we start churches. And we have now made other countries in the world likened unto America. Democratic. Yeah, you know, the kind of government that God hates, you know, the kind that, you know, is miry clay that nobody is responsible because everybody dodges responsibility because they can say, we the people, rather than I did it. We the people, you know, and so guess what? We're not judged. No, we don't we don't get judged. Because after all, it's a democracy. Who did it? They did. The other party, that party, this party, the other party, only somebody did it. Let's blame the president. Ooh, you know, after all, we are doing the American way. Huh. Interesting, isn't it? So, recognizing religiosity, that you're being deceived whenever someone tells you anything about American prophecy, doesn't exist. There is no, there never has been, there never will be any scripture to put American prophecy. Sorry. It's been proven too many times over and over and over and over again. And the older people get, sometimes people start stretching and stretching and stretching and then finally they go, you know what, I just want it in there so I'm going to write a book about it and say it's in there. Because after all, we have to be in there somewhere. Or where did we go? Well, we're too young. It doesn't matter. We're like a blip in a timeline. We don't even count. We haven't even been around for three or four generations. If we are, we've been around for five or six generations, maybe, max. That's not very long in God's economy. Man, we haven't even had a chance to completely screw up and wipe out our own nation from within, within our own context of de devolution rather than you know, becoming what God wanted us to be. So you see, you might want to look at kind of like even Sodom and Gomorrah, how long they were around. You know, because they were like the cities of the plains and they have been around for a while. Ooh, from the flood onward, they kind of made up these cities. You know, wonder how long and how old they are. And they got mentioned. Hmm. There's an awful lot of people mentioned by name, isn't there? There's an awful lot of people that God called specifically by their first name. Kind of like, you know, uh, Tyrus. I want to say Tyrus. Um, Well, Nebuchadnezzar, he called by name. That was pretty simple. <laughs> There's one. And he was probably the big head honcho. But, you see, when it came to nations, God gave Daniel a dream of certain prophetic nations. And we weren't in it. I'm sorry. We're not even the stone that comes and knocks the statue down. We're not even one of the beasts. We don't even fit in prophecy. It'd be kind of hard to make it fit, too, once you start getting into, well... When? You know, when was America what we are today? Because, you see, at one time we were just like kind of way over on the East Coast. Then we kind of expanded, and by the time, let's see, what? 1776, and then Battle of 1812, and then, you know, like kind of, okay, so it was kind of like, you know, over within 100 years, then Louisiana purchased, we got half of the continent, and then we move on to another part of the continent. But when did we become a world power? Or, wait a minute, does God treat world powers as important, or does he treat, like, civilizations that are based in those countries that he calls by name? Calls by name. America, God shed his grace on me. While it's beautiful to sing it, while it's wonderful to salute it, while it's great to live it here, not the best name you'd call us would be Babylon, but, you know, I'm not even going to go there because we're not Babylon either. You know, we're not the Roman Catholic Church. Mess that up. We're not Catholics. Some are, some aren't. 
we're not Democrats because we're also to this republic. There's not even people that agree on what we are anyways because we all argue about it and decide what we want to do. I would like to say that we are a microcosm of a macrocosm of fulfillment of prophecy within the context of a parameter that if you wanted to take a sphere and see what all the prophecy could be involved into and look at it and kind of go, well, like that, and then over here, this is prophecy, and this is kind of like what it could be like. You could do a comparative, I guess, but that's still not in prophecy. That's philosophy. You could do some philosophical equations of trying to say, well, the rise and the fall of the Roman Empire and America, you know, it's kind of similar, you know. So this is kind of like a complete picture of what is going on over here that's going to happen in the near future with what the coming together of the nations that are over there in the, you know, ten toes of Daniel and Nebuchadnezzar's dream. But you see what's happening? Even as I'm saying it, you realize how dumb it is. You realize how stupid I sound. Every time I mention American prophecy, I just keep going, Ew, who would believe that? Nobody's that dumb. Are they? Or are they? You see, your favorite prophecy scholar, or site, or person, or teacher, while he may be concentrating in one area and is really good in that one area, because you're an American, we got to play to the Americans, you know? We got to play this up a little bit, you know? We got to add some meaning so that we don't lose America because, after all, Americans want to be part of the game. They want to participate. They want to know where they fit. How do I fit in there? Where's our picture? How come we're not there? I'm not supporting that. And every other country in the world looks at us and says, You want to know where Satan is? Huh. The center of Satan's seat? Uh, yeah. America? Huh. Hello? Because we have, really, on the one hand, if you looked at the church, you know, the letters to churches, you could kind of go with the one where it says, we know where Satan's seat is, you know, and yeah, you're right next to it, yeah, you do good, but you also know where Satan is, you know, and wandering through the land doing his thing, too. And then we invade everyone else and bring them our own perversions. So, partly, if you could just please accept the one point, if you could just research the one point, if you could just prove to yourself the one point and stick with the word of God and not the word of man, then you could walk along and say no, like I do, to every single person every time they post American prophecy. I just say no. I don't even have to look at the video. I don't even have to pay attention. There is nothing in prophecy. I've studied it for 35 years. But you can do it now. You can be a prophet. Yeah, you could be, you know, a minor prophet, but you could be a prophet. You, know? you can... Literally, every time you see it on the Facebook or Twitter or a book or a bookstore or some, you know, latest, greatest guy that used to be just a blogger and now he thinks he's somebody important because, you know, he's gotten, like, a lot of notoriety. He's got so many followers and likes that now he's somebody important. <laughs> Importantly wrong, but just as wrong. <laughs> but anybody that tells you America's in prophecy is false. I mean, not that they are false, but that statement is. It's not true. It's a lie. It's a deception. It's a misconception. It is a tendentialism of inserting your own wants for what God has said. Because if I'm wrong, prove it. Prove to me you can find American prophecy, and I'll eat it. Because <laughs> I already know that better. It's like, you know what? Uh, you know, you listen to these guys, and it's like, you know, like, come on, man, give me a break. You know, you, you start inventing some country into something, you know, it's almost as bad as when you start getting into, we're going to invent new wars because we didn't like the old wars that we already knew were provable. Now we're going to invent some new wars in order to try to explain why we don't understand what we don't understand. So we can put out a new book, and just like your prophecy people will do, in order to pacify you, they're going to sell you a new book, American Prophecy, or a new idea. America is here, so you'll read it, so you'll buy into it, so you'll participate, and you'll hopefully, they think, get taught the truth over here while they're giving you the bull loney over here. And that's what it is, because it's just a mishmash of false ideas, false theology, and nothing scriptural. America is not in prophecy. Religiosity has invaded prophecy now, and is trying to tell you something that is pure malarkey. And you know it. 
You already know it. Come on. Be real. If you know anything about prophecy, if you study for even five minutes, you know America's not in prophecy. Come on. You know a sales gimmick when you hear it? You're not that naive. You wouldn't buy into somebody telling you that America's in prophecy, so send me five bucks so that I can sell you my book. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe you would, because after all, there are people in Nigeria telling you they are a prince and they'll give you what you want to hear so that you can get what you want if you'll just send them some money. Didn't you call that tickling your ears? I thought that was a con job. I thought that was con artists. Are you telling me that now in religiosity people are conning you into something or are we conning ourselves into believing something that's not true?